Hello everyone, this is Cody Lee of BlackCatBooks.org, author of I, the Dragon, Cool and Beautiful Rabbit Hole, and King Gia. Well, the newest Cinemassacre controversy has, uh, I think, just hit online. Uh, I actually was awake and uh, paying attention to it when like it, this first became known, but I didn't make a video right away. I was doing other things. I, uh, I could have. I could have responded to it immediately. Uh, Monster Madness, Cinematic, Cinemassacre's Monster Madness has kicked off in the worst possible way. Fans immediately noticed that the first episode of this uh, this event, where uh, James Rawls talks about movies, uh, the very first episode had a script written ripped off verbatim from another review. That's right, James Rolfe, or rather his employees at Screenwave, or however this situation works, I, I think that he I think that he considers them partners. His partners at Screenwave had a guy who stripped a movie. script a movie review from someone else and incorporated it into their uh, into their script, right? Uh, James Rolfe recorded it and released it to the public, and uh, now Cinemassacre has released a completely plagiarized review of I, I think twenty eight days later. I, I'm not I'm not quite familiar with this uh, this movie. I, I don't care about it. I, I don't know anything. Um, but yeah, completely one hundred percent plagiarized. Uh, Justin Silverman has already apologized. He's made excuses for it, but. Um, th this is a really, really good example of just wh how far Cinemassacre has fallen in the past couple of years. How hard is it to watch a movie and then do a review, and yet James somehow can't or won't do it? Like, I, I don't understand. Why did he decide to bring Monster Madness back if he wasn't going to watch the movie and if he wasn't going to write the review himself? Like, what was he thinking? Like, what what was he thinking? Like, people come to Cinemassacre.com, uh, Cinemassacre for James Rolfe's opinions on on movies and, and games. Well, t t uh, well, maybe not so much games. Uh, he's always had, like, other people helping him with the game stuff. But, you know, he had experience with games. He knew a, a fair bit about them. He knew a... He had an idea. It's like... He doesn't give a shit about anything anymore. It, it really does come off like that. I, I don't understand how he could seriously allow a completely plagiarized review hit his... Hit, just go onto his, uh, his YouTube channel. Like, just completely plagiarized. Just word for word, verbatim. Just... Ugh. It is ridiculous. It, it, it just goes to show you that, like, uh, these Screenwave people... They're completely incompetent, right? Because Screenwave, all these problems started when Screen Screenwave started being started being involved. The editing got worse. The shots got worse. Uh, the reviews themselves got worse. Like the things became super cringy. Like the, the, there's just so much I, I don't care for now that like Screenwave is getting more and more control and just. Uh, shoving themselves into more and more of the content. Like, this isn't why I subbed to Cinemassacre. And it is the reason that I unsubbed. Like, I'm, I'm, a regetic, I'm regetting, like, I'm not regretting my uh, unsub, I'm, subbing, I'm subbing for the channel at all because I've been noticing these kind of problems for a while now. But just seeing, like, just the sheer amount of weird stuff that's just getting put on that channel from, like, music videos that aren't edited properly to just weird mistakes and like weird uh weird reviews and weird decisions and weird just uh, you know complete plagiar completely plagiarized reviews like it's it's not at all appealing it makes you look bad you need to stop uh, and, and that's my view on it like james needs to stop like he needs to get rid of screen wave immediately effective immediately just get rid of them and slow down his video output like save some money by getting rid of them and just like, I don't know, just live off your old content. What's the big deal? Uh, like maybe have, maybe have someone help manage like the legacy content and, and retire. Like if you don't want to put in the work, if you want to do something else, like do it. Like th th that's, that's kind of my view on it. Like I, like either retire if you're not interested in it, in it anymore or just, you know, try to find that passion for it again. Like, don't keep it, don't keep dragging it along, like, hoping it's going to keep making you more money because 
it, it's not. Like, it's petering out. It's on its death rows. Uh, yeah. Early, early death stage, I think. Like, uh, I, I think it's safe to say at this point that, like, Cinemasker is on the decline. I don't think it'll really recover from this uh, this current string of bad decisions. I, uh, I think more and more people are starting to notice that, like, uh, this isn't good. Like, this isn't... This wasn't a good direction for the channel to go in, and I, I don't want to see more of it.